number of candid and useful conversations over the years and uh, since I became president as well. You're kind enough to call me to congratulate me, and I congratulate you as well. And I believe there's a little substitute, though, for to face-to-face -face discussions. And uh, as you know, I'm committed to keeping the lines of communications open between you and me personally, but our governments across the board, because our two countries are have uh, so much that we have an opportunity to deal with. As the leaders of uh, our two nations, we share responsibility, in my view, to show that China and the United States can manage our differences, prevent competition from becoming anything ever near conflict, and to find ways to work together on urgent global issues that require our mutual cooperation. And uh, I believe uh, this is critical for the sake of our two countries and the international community. This, uh, this was a key to the theme of the COP27 meeting, where I spoke on Friday, and we'll be discussing a lot of these challenges together, I hope, uh, in the next couple hours. And uh, the world expects, I believe, China and the United States to play key roles in addressing global challenges from climate uh, changes to food insecurity and uh, for us to be able to work together, the United States stands ready to do just that, work with you if that's what you desire. This so, President Xi, I look forward to our continuing and ongoing open and honest dialogue we've always had. And I thank you for the opportunity. Mr. President, it's good to see you. The last time we met was in 2017 during the World Economic Forum in Davos. That was already more than five years ago. Well, since you assumed the presidency, we have maintained communication via video conferences, phone calls, and letters. But none of them can really substitute for face-to-face -face exchanges. And today, we finally have this face-to-face -face meeting. From the initial contact and the establishment of diplomatic relations to today, China and the United States have gone through 50-plus eventful years. We have gained experience, and we've also learned lessons. History is the best textbook. So we should take history as a mirror and let it guide the future. Currently, the China-U.S. relationship American relation is facing a lot of challenges. Is in such a situation a of concerns of the public. that we all care a lot about it because this is not the fundamental interest of our two countries and peoples, and it is not what the international community expects us. As leaders of the two major countries, we need to chart the right course for the China-U.S. relationship. We need to find the right direction for the bilateral relationship going forward and elevate the relationship. A statesman should think about and know where to lead his country. He should also think about and know how to get along with other countries and the wider world. Well, in this time and age, great changes are unfolding in ways like never before. Humanity are confronted with unprecedented challenges. The world has come to a crossroads. Where to go from here? This is a question that is not only on our mind, but also on the mind of all countries. The world expects that China and the United States will properly handle the relationship. And for our meeting, it has attracted the world's attention. 
So we need to work with all countries to bring more hope to world peace, greater confidence in global stability, and stronger impetus to common development. In our meeting today, I'm ready to have a candid as we always did, have a candid and in-depth exchange of views with you on issues of strategic importance in China-U.S. relations and on major global and regional issues. I look forward to working with you, Mr. President, to bring China-U.S. relations back to the track of healthy and stable growth to the benefit of our two countries and the world as a whole. Thank you. The camera is being pulled away at this point for that major meeting to take place on the sidelines of the G20. Biden talking about how important it is to keep those lines of communication mm -hmm. open. And both of them being quite positive about this. Well, she was talking about a crossroads in the relationship, which the whole world is looking to them to negotiate. Well, they'd have to be at this stage. I mean, those were just the opening remarks. And actually, despite it underscoring both of their intentions to try and start it out on a positive note, it did underscore the lack of relationship that exists because they were scraping the barrel yeah. in you know, outlining the connections that they had, the fact that they called each other when they you know, yeah. respectively were um, affirmed as head of state. Um, but let's bring in Ivan Watson and Stephen Zhang, who have been listening to that as well. Ivan, what were your first, um, your first thoughts about those remarks that we heard from both leaders? Right. Well, just on a cosmetic front, you note that everybody except the two leaders are, are wearing masks there, and that's a reflection of China and its uh, mm. dynamic zero COVID approach. Uh, Biden met with the Indonesian president, the host of the G20 summit, earlier today, and there the two delegations were not wearing masks. That's one difference. Uh, and we did hear uh, Biden and, importantly, Xi Jinping uh, saying that the world is paying attention to this meeting. The world wants some kind of movement forward and a dialogue and uh, to avoid b basically bad things from happening. Uh, I think it's important to note that he talked about a crossroads. Uh, Xi Jinping in February, when meeting with uh, a man he's described as a, as a close friend with no boundaries, the Russian President Vladimir Putin, they talked about establishing a new world order. Uh, they clearly chafe at uh, the preeminent position that the U.S. has had since World War II. Uh, meanwhile, President Biden is coming to this meeting trying to establish new guidelines, as the White House has put it, to try to prevent a, a, a crisis from emerging between uh, the U.S. and China. So it does sound like these two leaders are talking about some kind of new framework for interacting with each other, recognizing that what's been going on in the past simply isn't working.